Okay, now that we've done with, uh, we're done with the elliptic curve math, let's look on what is actually Schnorr signatures. So we have a glossary here to help us remember stuff. So M is a message, E is the hash of, a me of the message and some other stuff, which we'll go over soon. G is the generator, uh, the generator point, which we've talked about. Uh, this, this is the private key, which is just some scalar. Now, as we've said before, you can take a point, uh, a point, you can take a scalar, multiply by the generator, and get a point. So public key is actually just that. We take the private key, which is a scalar, we multiply by the point, and we get the public key. Okay? Um, so K is some random nonce, and R is actually uh, that nonce multiplied by the generator. Okay? So this is the public point for that nonce. So all Schnorr is, is you take the random nonce, you take that E, multiply by your private key, you add them up, and this is the signature. Now, E will contain R, which is the public nonce, P, which is your public key, and M, which is the message. The reason for that is that there's a bunch of reasons, but the, but the general intuition is that you can't fake signature for uh, relative private keys, meaning you have two private keys that are somewhat connected, meaning like an HD wallet, so you cannot just offset the, the signature by the known difference between those private keys to create, to forge a signature. So that's why we need to hash both the public nonce and the public key, so that you cannot just by changing one of those forge another signature. Um, okay, and then the, actually the signature is going to be S, that scalar that we just computed, and R, which is the public point of the nonce. Okay, and to verify, we have, e, uh, we have D multiplied by G, which is the public key, right? We know that. We have K times G, which is the R, that's part of the signature. And we know E, because that's publicly known, that's the message we were signing on. So by adding, by multiplying E by the public key and adding to it the R point, we, all we need to do is make sure that it's the same as S, which is again part of the signature, multiplied by G. Okay? If this uh, equation holds, then the signature is correct and verified. And now, as you see, there's a scalar is 32 bytes. And point has x and a y, right? So that's together 96 bytes, which is pretty big and sucks because ECDSA is up to 72 bytes. So what can we do about this? So as we've seen with Schnorr, because there's S and R, it means there's 96 bytes of signature, which isn't fun because as I've said again, ECDSA is up to 72 bytes. Um, but so what we can do is we can try to make a way that we send only the x and not the y, right? Because r is a point and it has x and a y. Now, if we look at actually the secp equation, we can solve for y and we get a square root, meaning for every x there are two y's. One of them is going to be plus and the other is minus, right? That's how square roots work. So if we can somehow find a way that we implicitly say which is the correct y, then we can send only the x and then solve and get the correct y. And that way we can save 32 bytes. How can we do this? There's three ways we know to do it. One is even an add, meaning because our group order is add, it's an add prime, then if, for example, our y is even, then you do add minus even, and you get to add. And if our y is add, you do add minus add, you get to even. So if we can somehow tell the recipient, if it's even or odd, he can solve and choose the correct y. But this still requires another byte, or we can say we are accepting only odd or only even y's. Another way to do it is lower or higher half. Meaning, let's say our, our, our order is 10, okay, and, our, and the y is 3. If you do 10 minus 3, you get 7. So every y you have, the other, if it's above half, the other y is going to be under the half. Right? Because that's how modulo works. So we can say implicitly our y is only above the half, or our y is only under the half. And that way, again, we save, with, uh, we don't need to send the y, we send only the x. There is a third option, which is a bit more complicated. That's called quadratic residue. Quadratic residue means that there is a solution for the square root, meaning that the y, if you square root the y, you actually get a solution. For example, in integers, 
um, 39 has the solution 7, but 60 has no uh, full square root, right? So quadratic residue means that we are limiting to only y's that have a square root. Okay, now in practice we will actually use that way because it's way more performant um, and this gives us faster verification times, which is pretty great.